Hello, it's Bini here. Today, I'm going to talk about Singapore Bank. It's not surprising that I'll be talking about Singapore Bank with uh, SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, going down. But I think that uh, it's not uncommon for me, for me to mention about Singapore Bank because I've been talking about my bearishness on Singapore Banks uh, because of the high interest rate. Ultimately, uh, the high interest rate will cause a, a huge stress on banks. All right. And uh, since uh, 2009, we are not used to high interest rate because we've been in a period of uh, quantitative easing that is to be flooded with lots of money in the market. Suddenly, when there is uh, a, a steep rise in the interest rate, then we might see similar things happening You know, for uh, uh, what, what we saw in 2008. Zero nine, or even during the Asia financial crisis. That's also caused by um, a low rate environment where people borrow money, all right, borrow a lot of money in US dollar. Right? When US high rate, then they find that their loans are getting more expensive and that caused a, you know, Asia financial crisis. Now today, uh, if you take a look at the headline to the right hand side, all right, then you find that okay, a second bank, uh, which is Sinisha Bank, right, is the second bank after SVB to have a bank failure. All right, and uh, Fed basically said that all the depositors will be able to get back the money. All right, now the the issue is here all right, is not about whether it's SVB or whether it's Sinisha Bank. It's about how bad is this contagion. I think the key word here is contagion. All right, and all this is going to be contagious. And the question will always be, all right, even if Singapore banks, they are not affected, but the fear will cause a sell down in the Singapore banks. All right. Now, uh, I think you have to understand the fear component here. All right. People will sell ahead even before the actual events happen. So always is the fear component. Now, uh, before I moved on, that means that before I talk about more into what I think about Singapore banks, uh, I would uh, invite you guys to join me in a session with SGX in uh, in in uh, on Saturday, right, three fifteen p.m. to four fifteen, where I'll be talking about intermarket analysis. I think that this is very very relevant, especially when we take a look into how interest rate and money market affect the stock market and as well as how it affects the banks. Right. Now, last year, during the October-November period, I was able to use intermarket analysis to predict a turning point in the stock indexes, which would be, for example, the Hong Kong went up by 50%, STI went up by uh, near to 20%. All right. Now, same thing with intermarket analysis. I predicted that the banks are going to correct near to February. All right, so please tell if you're interested, you can join me uh, on 25th of March. All right, but before that, I've put up a link for you to register. All right, you need to register for this session first to attend uh, my, my talk here. All right, so without uh, further ado, let's take a look into Singapore banks. This is STI. Today, STI dropped about 40 points, all right, 1.27%. This drop wasn't, um, you know, Common. It wasn't something that just uh, came came out because of uh, what happens in the U.S. In fact, that we were able to uh, know of this drop ahead of the, what happened in U.S. because there was a wash and rinse here. So basically, there was a wash and rinse here that led to a short in STI. And if you ask me whether there is any sign to long here, not yet. But personally, I'm looking at a possible a temporary pause right around the area of 30, uh, 3,070. Okay, plus minus around this area here, all right? Uh, that's about 3,070, which is this area, to 3,050. Right? I'm talking about probably a technical rebound from this huge drop here. I'm not talking about a mid-term or long-term uh, buy, all right? I think that uh, we still need to digest all the news that might be happening, all right? But let's take a look into uh, DBS and UOB, the top two banks in Singapore, and to understand technically how is their movement. Right, today DBS dropped by about 1.36%, UOB about 1.22%. They are in the range of the STI drop. Let's take a look in the DBS here. Previously, 
somewhere near during last year, February to uh, July period, banks also had a drop, and I and and it was uh, more like a to me a technical correction. Okay, it's not linked to any, you know, international news or macro news. If we're gonna work in the same space of last uh, year drop, that means to assume that it might drop a twenty one percent, then what we are seeing right now is in terms of the current drop is far away okay from this 21 percent now this means that if, if you assume that history is going to repeat itself then i'm expecting probably dbs to continue to drop and the minimum point of rebound right that means a minimum point of support would be around 2850 all right and this means that from the high to the low it had fallen about 21 percent which is similar to the previous round now, if we measure in terms of uh, history, that means that in terms of what happened in the past on similar events, uh, similar events to in the past would be around 2008, 2009, and that was caused by itself the US financial issue. Now, same thing during that period, US was uh, hiking rate, and that caused, uh, before, before the rate hike, right, uh, there was a period of very loose uh, policies. That means interest was cheap. All right, and that caused to a lot of people buying on loan multiple houses when they can't afford that. All right, and then caused the uh, subprime uh, issues, and that caused the collapse of Lehman Brother. Same thing, right? Uh, during that period, there was a drop of uh, Singapore banks about 70%. That means from the high to the low, that was a correction or a plunge of 70% in the similar uh, context that we are seeing right now. Okay, it has to do with the banking system. Now, if we extrapolate in that manner, from the high to the low, we if we are expecting a 70% drop, that would be really, really huge. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm just going to talk about a lesser extent drop this time round before we move on to the 70%. Now, if you look into the same period during the 2018 to 2020 period, and that was the period where Fed uh, high rate, that means that it was a period of a loose policy. And then because of that, Fed decided to high rate. And in that case, it caused the stock market to drop. Now, if we assume that we are in the same environment without considering of the uh, banking uh, problems right now, and we just assume that it's a rate high environment, and that had a drop of banks, you know, 47, 46%, all right, then imagine a 46% drop from the high to the low, all right, then we are talking about, you know, let's, let's look at it live and then let's measure that, right, a 46% drop. Okay, in a similar manner. All right, then we are talking about a price of DBS moving to $20. Now, let's not look at really the worst scenario. Let's try to play around with something that's a, bit, a little bit uh, happy, a little bit uh, pleasing type of uh, uh, setting. We assume that not a 46% drop, but a $15 or $14.60 drop. And that will bring us to somewhere around here. And that's about $23. And I believe that $23 is something that we might want to look at first, right? Because that was a previous historical high of BBS. And naturally, in terms of technical analysis, we are expecting that a previous high is going to act as a strong support. All right. So let's consider uh, of uh, a milder nature. All right. Probably in the range of a 38 to 40% drop. For the banks, for DBS, okay, that will bring us to a twenty-three dollars, and we assume that, for example, it is going to be a forty-six percent drop, and that will bring us to a price of near to twenty dollars. Then, uh, if we gonna expect the worst, which is a seventy percent drop, all right, like this here. Uh, we're going to be talking about an eleven dollars and fifty cents range for DBS, okay, near to eleven fifty to twelve dollars. All right, so that's for DBS. Let's take a look at UOB. All right, for UOB, let's apply the same simulation. Last year, during the uh, February to July period, even up to October, it dropped a total of 22%. If I'm going to assume this as true, then coming from the recent high, I've simulated a 22% drop. 
we are looking at uh, UOB at about $24.50, or in fact, $25, plus or minus around that. All right. Now, let's take a look into, uh, you know, in any case, that what happened during uh, the 2018 period where we had a series of a uh, rate hike and that caused the stock market to drop. UOB dropped by about 42% or $13. Now, taking this extent here, same thing, I'm just going to map out from the high to the low, a 42% that's around here. All right, and then uh, probably either a $13 movement and that's around here, right? Now, what we are seeing as a commonality is that it's coming near to this long-term trend line that I'm drawing here, which is about UOB into the $20 region. Okay, $20, $21 region, even $19 region. All right, so uh, let's not assume the worst. If we assume that it's going to follow what happened during 2018, then we are talking about a possibility of UOB coming to $20 region, 19 20 or 21 Now let's assume the worst case scenario. We're going to look at what happens in 2008, and that's about 66% drop. Now, a 66% drop is going to bring UOB to about this price here. All right, and that's about $11 and $11 plus minus around there. Or we are talking about a $16 drop. A $16 drop would bring UOB to around this place here. All right, and that's uh, one of the recent low. And that's about $16.50 plus minus around there, 16 to 17 uh, 17 Okay, so few levels we have for UOB, and that's about the $20 region, the 16 to 17 region, and lastly, somewhere that I don't wish to see, and that's the $11.50 region. Right, now, um, this, this video is very important because um, I hope that you understand that history can repeat itself, and that's where we need to refer to the past to understand what people are thinking about. Okay, I hope that this short video is going to give you an idea right, of uh, how price can move. right? Uh, because previously, history did show us that it can move uh, so much in this extent here. Alright, come to the end of the video. I hope that you like this video. If you like, please give a thumbs up and as well as to subscribe so that if there's new content, then you'll be notified of.